My guest today on Catholic Forum had his life all planned out. He would turn his God-given talent for baseball into a career in the major leagues. But it seemed that God had a different plan, the Catholic priesthood. Father Burke Masters is the author of the new book, A Grand Slam for God, A Journey from Baseball Star to Catholic Priest, available from Word on Fire Publishing. Father Masters, welcome to the program. I'm very happy to, uh, to get to know you and to, to chat with you today. Thank you. Good to be with you as well. We're going to be talking about your book and about your baseball career and your calling to the priesthood, but, but let's start out with your current position. Tell us about your current parish, if you would, please. Sure. For a year and a half now, I, I started in July of 2022. I've been the pastor here at St. Isaac Jogues Parish in Hinsdale, Illinois, hmm. and uh, it's just been a, a joy. So I'm in the Diocese of Joliet, and Hinsdale is about... 20 miles west of the city center in Joliet. So it's a, a wonderful parish, and I love being the, the pastor here. Do you have a school um, or, um, you know, it's, it's a large parish, right, Father? It is. We, we have about 2,500 families in the wow. parish, about 550 students in the school from preschool through eighth grade, uh, over 400 uh, students in our religious education program, and there's a lot of activity here, which which I enjoy. Yeah, that's great. So uh, you, you have this new book out. It's about how you went from baseball to priesthood. Um, let's start with baseball. When did you start playing baseball? I think right out of the womb, actually. <laughs> um, so I'm the I'm the youngest of four boys. My my second brother died at birth, so there's three boys that are living. My dad played college basketball. And we're a sports-minded family. My mother was a, a basketball player in high school as well. So our family revolved around sports. So I, I grew up, you know, following my brothers around. I was the, the little brother that tagged along. But what was good about that was in our neighborhood, there were a lot of boys. And I was one of the younger ones. And I either had to play to keep up with them or stay at home and not participate at all. And so I chose to try to play and so I, I remember probably from the age of four or five, picking up a bat and, and ball and playing with my brothers. And I started playing organized baseball at the age of seven. So when did you realize that you're not just your average kid playing baseball, that you actually had some, some really good talent? That's a good question. So probably when I started Little League, um, I started to notice that um, I had some talent and I was getting recognition in the local newspapers. And when it came time for me to go to high school, uh, even though you're not supposed to recruit in high school, I had a couple of the Catholic high schools that were inviting me to come to their school in order to play baseball and get a good education. And so I knew probably going into high school that I would, I was going to be able to play college baseball. And uh, that was my my goal. I, I set a goal probably when I was seven or eight to be a major league baseball player, just like every young boy does, I think. Mm -hmm. But as I got into high school, I started to realize this might be a real possibility. So you were you said you went to a Catholic high school. I did. Yeah. I went to Providence Catholic High School in New Len New Lenox, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting was we weren't Catholic. <laughs> Yeah. And both of my older brothers went to the public high school in town in Joliet. And my parents weren't happy. They had heard that the public high school might be closing and they were consolidating. And so my parents said, you have two options. You can go to Joliet Catholic or Providence Catholic. And I ended up going to Providence because that's where a lot of my friends were going. Yeah. My, my thought was I'm going to further my baseball career. But God had other. Pa well, I think he had plans to further my baseball career, but also to introduce me to the Catholic faith. Yeah, talk about that. What what was it about the Catholic faith as a high schooler that attracted you? I think what attracted me more than anything was the way my teachers and my classmates lived out their faith. Mm -hmm. There was a sense of community in that school that was different than in my public grade school days. I sensed teachers truly cared about us it felt like a family atmosphere at the school. 
there were there were about seven or eight nuns teaching at the school, five priests. And it was my first experience of priests and nuns in the Catholic Church. And I just experienced this love that that was kind of my initial attraction. And then as they started teaching the theology, you know, in our, our theology classes, all of the pieces of the puzzle started to come together for me. I realized that I was missing something in my life. You know, I was doing well in sports. I was a good student. I had friends, but my soul was not filled yet. And it wasn't until I encountered Christ in reading the Bible and uh, going to Mass. Of course, I didn't receive communion because I wasn't Catholic, but uh, I found the one that I was searching for, and that was Jesus. Were you raised in any particular faith uh, tradition? or? Um... Good question. So my parents were raised Christian. My mother was raised Baptist, mm -hmm. and my father was raised in the United Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they got married, they had lived in southern Illinois. They moved to Joliet. And they said in the move, you know, you start to have a family and they were looking for a church and little by little, they started to fall away from going to any church. Mm -hmm. So I would say I was like a secular Christian. Right, right. <laughs> I, I grew up in a Christian home, but we didn't practice any faith yeah. really at all. So my life was really formed by my parents, but even more so probably by the secular culture. Right. So when, when you were a senior, you decided to become a Catholic. Um, I did. Tell, tell us about that, if you would, please. Yeah, so my junior year, I went on a retreat. And at the closing mass, so I'd always gone to the school masses in the gym, and I would never go forward for communion. And they never taught us this symbol to go up and ask for a blessing. So on this retreat, there was a visiting priest. He didn't know me. I didn't know him. And when it came time for communion, it was a small group of boys on the retreat, uh, he gathered us around a circle and he started coming around the circle with communion. And I got really nervous because I didn't know what to do. And when he came in front of me, he held up the Eucharist and he said, the body of Christ. And I opened my mouth to say, I'm not Catholic, but the words didn't come out and in went my first communion. Wow. And I can tell you, uh, people say, well, what was that experience like? All I can say was, I felt the power of God in a way that I had never experienced before in my life. So much so that I went home that night and told my parents, I have to join the Catholic Church. And uh, fortunately, they, well, they said, slow down. But they, <laughs> they said, take the next year, keep praying and studying. And if at this time next year you want to join the Catholic Church, we'll support you. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Well, well, good for them for, for being open to that. I mean, I think that's, that's terrific. It says a lot about, about your parents. Very, um, I'm very blessed with the, yeah. the parents that God gave me, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So then you went off to college. Um, talk about that. You were a very successful college uh, player, correct? So I, I went to Mississippi State University, where if you follow baseball, this is where Will Clark, Rafael Palmero, mm -hmm. Bobby Thigpen, and Jeff Brantley played in 1985, all four future major league ball players. And I came in the fall of 85 and um, I redshirted my first year, which is a common thing to do there. And then I started for the next four years and uh, got to play in the college world series. My senior year, I was named all, all sec. Um, I was the MVP of the regional tournament to get to the college world series and had the game of my life against Florida state in my senior year where I went six for six and hit a grand slam my, in the ninth inning to help propel us to the College World Series in 1990, which was an amazing experience. Yeah, uh, I, I, I can only imagine. Um, uh, and how was your faith developing along those years in college? So one of our coaches, uh, who's an evangelical Christian, led a Bible study for the baseball team every Saturday morning. And I went because I wanted to continue learning about Christ as I had been in high school. And it was interesting in this Bible study, there were two Catholics. And then I'd say on average, there'd be another six or seven evangelical Christians or maybe Baptists. And the conversation would often come around to, well, what do you Catholics believe or, or why do you believe this? And even though I just had a great four year Catholic education in high school, I needed to learn more and their questions made me dive more into the catechism and the teachings of the church. And 
I would go to, you know, Sunday mass. Um, I was still searching and, you know, I thought there's so many non-Catholics here in Mississippi, about 98% non-Catholic. I thought, did I make a mistake by becoming Catholic? And the, <clears throat> the more I studied, the more I received the Eucharist, the more I believed this is where I'm called to be. And, uh, it was the Eucharist, interestingly, that brought me into the church and the Eucharist that was sustaining me in the Catholic Church. Mm. My guest today on Catholic Forum is Father Burke Masters. The book is entitled A Grand Slam for God, A Journey from Baseball Star to Catholic Priest. It's available from uh, Word on Fire uh, Publishing. And um, so, Father, when did you first get the inkling that God was calling you to the priesthood? I've reflected on that a lot. I, I'm sure the seeds of my my vocation were planted in my baptism mm -hmm. at the age of 18. But it wasn't until I went on a Curcio retreat. If you're not familiar with Curcio, it's a wonderful Catholic retreat. I went on that when I was about 26 years old. I was working in minor league baseball. So after my playing career was done, I thought I'm going to become general manager of a major league team. And just like the players, you have to work your way up the ladder. I was going to Sunday Mass. I was helping out different aspects of my of the parish life. And, uh, you know, I, I I was going to, I started to go to adoration. I started to go to daily Mass. And I would say those two things after my cursio, daily Mass and adoration, um, it helped me to slow down, to be in the presence of God and start to listen. Because I, I had my life planned out. You know, I was going to be general manager of the Cubs. I was going to be a millionaire. I was going to get married, have a big family, and just ask God to bless my plans. But as I went into adoration, I started to sense this call that God was saying, I want you to be a priest. And so I was about 26, 27 at the time. And I said, God, I don't want to be a priest. I've got my life planned out. I said, if this is what you want me to do, you have to make it clear. And little by little friends, family, complete strangers would come up to me and say, you know, Burke, I think you'd make a good priest. And so they were confirming externally what I was, you know, feeling this call from God um, internally. And I thought, I have to give this a try. So you applied for the, uh, for, for the diocese? Uh, I did. So I've, uh, interestingly, I was working in the Rockford Diocese in Illinois. Mm -hmm. and, and living there. So I, I I applied to the Diocese of Rockford, was accepted, went to Mundelein Seminary for a year. And after the first year, my mother uh, died from lung cancer. And so I, I asked for a transfer and transferred back to the Diocese of Joliet where I grew up. And so mm -hmm. I studied the next four years for the Diocese of Joliet and was ordained a priest in 2002. So what was your family's reaction to, to uh, you, know, he, you know, first of all, Burke <laughs> wants to become Catholic and now he wants to be a priest. <laughs> were they as yes. open to it as, as they were to your Catholicism? They were. I was so blessed. Uh, I first went to my mom because I knew my mom would support me in anything that was legal. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I said, Mom, I think God may be calling me to be a priest. And, you know, she she said, You've got my support. And I said, Mom, what what about Dad? And she said, give me a few days. <laughs> and uh, so she tilled the soil a little bit. And after three days, she came back to me and she said, I think your dad's ready to talk. Mm -hmm. And so I remember being really nervous because my two older brothers at that time then were married and starting to have a family. And I knew that's what my dad wanted for me and my mom, too. So I sat down and I said, Dad, uh, I feel like God's calling me to be a priest. And he said, are you sure you can be happy being a priest, you know, without being married? And I paused a moment and I prayed because I didn't know how to answer that question. And what came to me was I asked my dad a question. I said, Dad, how did you know mom was the right one for you? And he said, when I met your mother in high school, I knew she was the one. And I said, Dad, that's exactly how, how I feel. I can't explain this. But I just know in my heart that God created me to be a priest. And he said at that moment, he said, you've got my support. And so I was so blessed because I knew some friends in seminary whose parents were Catholic um, that didn't support 
their son's decision to go to seminary. And here I had two Protestant parents and they were 100% supportive. And my brothers too, um, my brothers didn't understand it, I don't think, but they, they were very supportive. Mm -hmm. And uh, interestingly, little by little, most of my family has become Catholic through the years. That's great. Uh, that's a beautiful story. Um, so let's talk about the book, Father. How did the book come about? Why did you decide to write it? So I served as the vocation director for the Diocese of Joliet for 12 years. And one of the things I did as vocation director was I would travel around our diocese sharing my story from being a Protestant baseball player to a Catholic priest and encouraging young people to listen to that call. Whatever God's call is, that's where we're going to find true happiness. And I have to say, every time I shared the story, someone or multiple people would say that needs to be a book. Hmm. And so that's how the Holy Spirit speaks to me when something gets repeated over and over again. Uh, the Lord placed it on my heart to the desire to write a book. And so I, I started writing probably around 2013 and then life got busy. I just didn't have time to finish it. And then about four years later, my niece, Mackenzie, my oldest brother's daughter, approached me and she said, Father Burke, I just graduated with a degree in creative writing. I'd love to help you finish this book. And it was a, a you know, an answered prayer. Mm. So she came out from Denver where she lived, interviewed a bunch of people, helped me finish the book. And then I edited it into my own voice. And so together we, we finished around... Well, what we thought was around 2020, but publishing a book is a long process. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we were fortunate. Bishop Barron was one of my professors at Mundelein Seminary. And I was so happy when Word on Fire accepted our book proposal and uh, agreed to publish it. And it just came out in August of 23. Yeah. You can't get a better endorsement than, uh, than Bishop Barron and, and Word on Fire. So that's that's terrific. What's I've heard been... from people all over the world, actually, people that Bishop Barron reaches that mm -hmm. I never would have reached, but because he has that reach, uh, you know, many people have read the book and I've just been hearing amazing stories of, of people who have read it. Yeah, that was going to be my next question is what has been the reaction um, to the book so far? It's been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, one of my favorite stories is uh, there's a woman that wrote me wrote to me from Guatemala and she said, you know, my husband is uh, an agnostic, possibly an atheist, but he loves the Cubs. <laughs> and she said, every time I bring up faith to him, he gets angry. And so she's on Bishop Barron's mailing list. And she saw, you know, there's a video along with my book uh, from Word on Fire. She saw the video and my connection to baseball and the Cubs. So she prayed and she sent the email to her husband she said she walked by one day and she saw him watching the video of my my life and she said he ordered the book on his own through amazon you can get it from amazon or word on fire and uh and then she said he read the book and he's reconsidering his faith in christ and the catholic church as a result of it wow. and i thought if if that's the one person that reads the book it's worth it but I've been hearing stories like that over and over again from all over the world, which is a great blessing. How about vocations? Do you know of any uh, possible vocations that's coming from the book? Not yet. I think it's too soon to right. tell, but yeah. that would be, wow, that would be a real gift. Yeah. And one of our hopes in writing the book that young men and women who read it might, might say yes to God's call, where before maybe they were a little nervous about surrendering to his will mm -hmm. so i would i would love to hear one day uh maybe somebody read the book and answered the god's call as a result of it but i haven't heard any yet yeah that, that's that's great so uh, our listeners and our viewers can get the book i you mentioned through amazon and and also at word on fire i have the um the email or actually the website there a uh, bookstore.wordonfire.org and uh, it's also probably available at, at Catholic bookstores. Is that correct? Yes. So if uh, you can ask your Catholic bookstore if they're carrying it, and if not, you know, maybe ask them if they if they would start to uh, 
we've been starting to hear more and more local Catholic bookstores yeah. picking it up and uh, as, as word starts to spread about the book. Yeah, great. Anything else you'd like to add, Father? No, people have asked me, like, what is the main message from the book? And I would say it's to surrender your will to the will of God. You know, when I went to the seminary, I thought I was giving up baseball forever. And amazingly, you know, I was able to, I was called to become the chaplain for the Chicago Cubs, mm -hmm. got to be a part of their 2016 World Series run, first one after 108 years. And I just realized as I experienced that, that God doesn't take away our desires when we follow him. But what it does, when we offer back to him what he's, what he's already given us, uh, he takes it, blesses it, purifies it, multiplies it, and gives it back to us in ways that we never imagined. So I just want to encourage the listeners to, to say yes to God because he has a wonderful plan for your life and he will not disappoint. That's good advice for, for anyone, a young person who's considering what to do the rest of their life or, or older people. You know, it's, it's good advice for everyone. And uh, we really appreciate you being here with us today on Catholic Forum. Uh, once again, uh, the book is titled A Grand Slam for God, A Journey from Baseball Star to Catholic Priest, available from uh, Word on Fire, from Amazon, or from your local Catholic bookstore. Um, Father Burke Masters, thanks so much for being with us on the program today. You're welcome. My pleasure, and God bless you all.